The United States has had more serial killers than any other country. As early as the 1800s, the United States has seen killers who murdered on a massive scale. Since then, the country has become captivated with true crime, in particular, serial killers. We are fascinated to try and get in the minds of these terrifying killers to try and learn about motives, tactics, and just what makes these serial killers tick. We have a list of men, women, and even families who were serial killers in every state across the United States. In this first part in the series, we will be discussing those serial killers in states A through C. So let's get started. Alabama, Thomas Warren Weisenhunt. In October 1976, Weisenhunt abducted Cheryl Lynn Payton from the convenience store where she worked. He drove her to a secluded spot and sexually assaulted her in the front seat of his pickup truck. He shot her point blank in the head and dragged her body into a wooded area. A few days later, he returned to her body and mutilated it. When he was caught, he told police everything about Peyton's murder and even confessed to other murders. The deaths of Benora Hyatt and Patricia Hitt. He was put to death in 2010. Alaska, Robert Christian Hansen, known as the Butcher Baker. Hansen was a brutal serial killer. He murdered between 17 and 21 victims between 1980 and 1983 in Anchorage, Alaska. Hansen routinely hired prostitutes for their services, then would kidnap and rape them. Afterwards, he used his private plane to fly his victims out to his remote cabin in Nick River Valley. He let them loose in the woods, then hunt and torture them for sport. In 1983, Hansen was arrested after Cindy Paulson escaped and contacted authorities. While searching his home, investigators found souvenirs of Hansen's victims, such as jewelry and body parts. Hansen was found guilty and sentenced to 461 years in prison in 1984. He died while in prison in 2014. Arizona, Mark Godot, known as the Baseline Killer. In the summer of 2006, Godot terrorized Phoenix, Arizona. He attacked women during their daily lives. He brutally raped and murdered one woman while she was vacuuming her car. Another woman met a similar fate while waiting for a bus. They were all found in pools of blood with their pants pulled halfway down. In total, the doe was found guilty of killing nine people, mostly women. In 2006, his nine death sentences were upheld in Phoenix. He is still in prison. Arkansas, the Phantom Killer Although this killer was never identified and spanned two states, the Phantom Killer earns his spot on the list for the terror he caused in 1946. In February 1946, Jimmy Hollis and Mary LeRae were attacked in their car. The pair ultimately survived. Three weeks later, the Phantom Killer had his first victims when Richard Griffin and Polly Ann Moore were killed in their car. Exactly three weeks later, another couple was murdered. Another three weeks after that, Virgil Starks was murdered and his wife Katie was severely wounded. Eventually, movie theaters canceled shows, people stayed inside behind locked doors, and very few ventured outside. The town of Texarkana, which spanned Texas and Arkansas, lived in fear, as he apparently attacked eight people and killed five. Then suddenly, the killing stopped. The Phantom Killer was never identified. California Ed Kemper. Ed Kemper was an extremely brutal serial killer. At 15, Kemper murdered his grandparents and spent just two years in prison for it. During his incarceration, Ed created a friendship with his psychologist and eventually became his assistant. Eventually, Ed convinced doctors that he was mentally fit and reformed, even managing to persuade his doctors to keep his juvenile records sealed forever. Kemper was released into his mother's care, but she kept him locked in a basement for fear that he would molest his own sisters. Kemper had a horrible relationship with his mother and felt like killing her was something that he just had to do. Kemper eventually murdered six female hitchhikers along with his mother and her friend. After his mother's death, Ed decapitated her, used her head as a dartboard, and screamed at the severed head. He was found guilty on eight counts of first-degree murder. He is currently serving his sentence in prison. 
Some people have argued that Ed Kemper is the inspiration behind Norman Bates in Psycho. Colorado, Scott Lee Kimball. Kimball is an FBI informant turned serial killer. In 2002, he was in jail for fraud and convinced the FBI to let him out as an informant. During those years free from jail, he killed four people. Kimball killed his uncle, his cellmate's girlfriend, and a 19-year-old girl. Kimball was the last to see all of them alive. After a brutal car chase, Kimball was arrested and pled guilty to four charges of second-degree murder. He is currently serving a 70-year sentence. Connecticut, William Devin Howell. Howell can be best described as a drifter. In 2003, he roamed the streets of Connecticut in his van that he dubbed his murder mobile. The name makes sense because at that time, Howell abducted, assaulted, and murdered seven people. He buried the bodies in his garden behind a strip mall as a memorial. He called himself a sick ripper and said that he kept the body of one of his female victims in his van for two weeks because it was too cold to bury her. He slept with the corpse and called it baby. Later, Howell cut the victim's fingertips off, dismantled her bottom jaw, and disposed of the body parts in Virginia. On trial, Howell said he had a monster inside him, and he couldn't explain his motive behind the killings. I know everyone wants to know why I committed these crimes. I don't have an answer. I do not know myself, he said at the time. In 2017, he was sentenced to 360 years in prison. That's it for this edition of Most Notorious Serial Killers by State. Join us next time for State's D through I. Hit the notification bell so you can be alerted when the next edition comes out. Thanks for watching. Hey, I'm Brittany. And I'm Matt. And this is The Macabre, a true crime podcast. Each week, we are going to bring you the grisly and horrific details of true crime cases from around the world. This podcast is not for the faint of heart, so viewer discretion is advised. He's killed Tim McLean. He's defiled the body, beheaded him, and now he's eating him strangled him with a leather strap, then dismembered him in the bathtub, and photographed every step in the process. He kept his head, hands, and genitals. Make sure you follow The Macabre on Instagram at the.macabre. Or on Facebook at The Macabre True Crime Podcast. Or you can send us an email at themacabrepod21 at gmail.com. Or check out our episodes and listen on our webpage at themacabrepodcast.buzzsprout.com. And you can listen to The Macabre on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Or your favorite podcasting app.